Sure, rent them high, but just look at view. Hi, I'm Dave, and this is Dave's Weird Project. Today I'm building a wasteland shack and exploring the wasteland inside. Let's take a look. The idea for this build is a wasteland shack cobbled together out of different sheets of metal sourced from all over the place, whatever the, the builder could find. It's not pretty, it's rusty, it might fall apart in the next big blow, but it works for now. It keeps the builder safe, rain off of them. The idea for this video has evolved a little bit. I was originally just going to do my standard deal, tell you how I built it, what I did, and I'm still going to do a little bit of that, but I also wanted to start talking a little bit more about why I do this, why I build things, why I make stuff, kind of why I'm making these videos. This is plastic mesh canvas. You can find it in any craft store. And I just cut it out diagonally to make this kind of mesh for the windows. I painted the inside black before gluing everything together so that it wouldn't be hard to get to them later. You may have noticed in some of the videos where you can see me, you know, at the start and the end of my crafting videos that, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm overweight, like a lot overweight. And I don't want to be that way. I've learned over the years that when I direct my energies, my creative energies into making things, whether it's physical things like this or digital art or trying to write computer games or writing a book, you can find my book on Amazon, by the way. Um, that was an awful plug. <laughs> anyway, um, when I do that, I eat less. And I don't eat to eat. I don't eat just for the sake of eating when I'm making stuff. And so that's a big deal for me is I gotta be creating. I've gotta be doing things, engaging with my hands, with my mind, with finding things to make and express and getting my vision for things out and into the world. I gotta do that. I use some heavy cardstock here to cover over the corrugation on the inside of the door so that it kind of looked like a smooth space that the door was in. With the pandemic that's going on, it's way too easy to lapse back into old habits. Just eat, and watch TV, try to shut out the world. I don't want to be that way. I want to make stuff. I want to share it with the world. And that's why I'm making the videos. I figure if I'm going to be creative, I can share it with anybody that wants to listen. I'm not angling to be a big YouTube star with hundreds of thousands or millions of subscribers. There's plenty of people out there that are really good at that. I don't know if I'll ever be. It'd be cool if, you know, this generated a little income, but it's not why I do it. I do it, one, to make stuff, two, to have some accountability to you, to the people watching. Even if it's only 20 people or less, <laughs> um, I feel like I want to bring this to you because I said I would. I said I'd bring you content, I'd bring you art, if that's a, a word I can use for it, and bring it to you and, and let you have it, give it to you. Um, and so that's that's what we're doing here is I'm accountable to you. I'm making these things for myself, but I'm making them for you too. I wanted a slanted roof and I realized after I had put all the walls together that I forgot to do that. <laughs> so I made some kind of slanted risers for each side out of cereal box cardboard, stuck them on, and a couple other little supports out of square dowel. Getting the paper off one side of the corrugated cardboard is a huge pain. I, everybody talks about doing this as the way to get your corrugated metal look. It's a pain. <laughs> I don't know if this cardboard was just super well glued or not, but I did do a lot of scraping to get all the glue off and it was tedious. So I'm not 
trying to make tutorials. I'm not trying to be a teacher. But I'll be really happy if you learn something. I'm not trying to get rich and famous, but it'd be cool if, you know, this generated something. I'm just trying to connect with people. Be a human with all the other humans. Do human things and just kind of see what I can do, see what I can make. See how I can shape the world, even if it's a teeny tiny reproduction of it. It's kind of scary to do this. <laughs> Make a video where, yeah, you watch me build some janky shack, but you also listen to me kind of bare my soul a little bit. But I've gotten a lot of good response, a lot of positive support since starting the channel, so I think this is going to land okay. If you don't like it, that's okay. I'm not going to be upset. Everybody has their thing, everybody has the stuff that they like, and it's okay not to agree with everything. Nothing is ever perfect, and we're not ever perfectly happy all the time. A very wise teacher has taught me that there's always a leak in the canoe. I'll just keep rowing and bailing it out. It's kind of like whoever built this shack, you know? Their world is kind of messed up. It got blown up. Everything's irradiated and weird. Storms. Crazy people running around with guns and swords and who knows, sharpened stop signs. But you can have a little house. You put a little work into it. You can have a little cook fire. You can live a little bit of a life and it can be okay. So yeah, I'm building my own shack. In the midst of all this craziness, I'm just trying to make something that's worth making. Just for the sake of making it, not for the sake of having anything at the end. Just for the act. Just for the doing. The journey is the reward, right? I got this tubing at a hobby store, a specialty hobby store, for model trains and other modeling. Uh, and I'm using it to be kind of larger pipe that was fitted around the smaller pipe that the cook fire thing is made out of. This is gel super glue and it worked okay for a little while and then the whole thing kind of fell apart. So I had to put it all back together again using epoxy, but it was basically the same procedure the whole way through. So everything you're seeing here, I just did it again, but with epoxy. <laughs> Partway through building, I decided I wanted the shack to be not completely attached to the base and instead go on with magnets. Cause that might be fun to try to store figures inside it save a little space that way and it's also just kind of neat so here i'm cutting out some sheet steel to go uh, glued onto the base and then the magnets on the bottom of the shack which you'll see in a minute will stick it onto that Turns out these magnets aren't quite strong enough to hold it on. I mean, it kind of works, but if you shake it like at all, it falls right off. That's okay. Now 
I used some of this DAS air dry clay to sculpt some little meat chunks onto the skewer. Here I tried to do some wet blending of different colors onto the ground so that it would look mottled and just varied. It wouldn't be one solid color. It looks really bright right now, but later on after the washes it looks a lot better. I'm going to be following a scheme to make this look rusty. Uh, I found it with Pete the Wargamer, and I'll make sure Terry puts a link to that down below. Uh, but it requires a nice value underneath, so I'm painting several of the panels different values of gray to make them look varied even with the same rust pattern applied to all of them. This is a very dark brown I'm stippling on. Uh, not quite black, I know it looks a little bit black in the video here, but there is brown in there. And it just kind of varies that rust texture straight from that tutorial I found. These little splotches of color are meant to look like old paint that's maybe still around, stuck on. It looks okay in some spots and not as okay in others, but the overall look is pretty good. Just throwing on a dark brown slash black wash here to kind of darken everything up, tie it all together. And this is a metallic silver mixed about 50-50 with black to make just kind of a dark shiny color. I'm putting it on all the little rivet nail hole things I punched in each panel and then also on some of the edges, not all of them, just uh, here and there to highlight and make it kind of suggest that there's still metal in there. I did the roasting spit with that same shiny dark metal and then painted the meat chunks brown and then added a little bit of streaks of red. And here's the whole thing all put together. I'm really really happy with it. I I just love how everything kind of came together. The ground color came out really nice after the washes went on. The shack looks great. The rust looks really good on it. I was really pleased with how that came out. The little roasting spit was such a pain to make, but so rewarding to see it done and there and looking. Actually, I feel pretty good. 
the little cinder blocks were fun to make. So yeah, I'm really happy with this project. I kind of ran out of deep things to say partway through the video, but uh, I don't know. Hopefully it lands for you. There we go. One wasteland shack ready to go. Move in, cook up some rad roaches and mole rats, grow some mute fruit, whatever your heart desires. Uh, before we get to the lessons learned, I'll just do all the standard pleading really quick. If you like this video, please click the like button. Maybe consider subscribing and sharing. If you want to support the channel directly, there's some links down below, like my book and some Amazon affiliate stuff. Uh, if you buy things through those links, I get a little kickback, but you don't pay anything extra. All right, lessons learned. I do these projects as much to learn something as to make something, so I like to round up what I think I learned at the end. All right, the biggest one I learned, I think, is that the super glue and that steel wire I used to make the cook roast spit thing, um, they don't mix. They, they came apart way too easily, and I had to go back and do the whole thing again with epoxy. That was painful, but a good learning experience, and uh, yeah, I'm not going to make that mistake again. There is a chart out there somewhere. I know I put a link to it in one of my videos on like which glue goes with which materials. I probably should have consulted that. Oh well. The Rust tutorial I followed came out really well, so I'm glad I paid attention to that and didn't just try to wing it on my own. Um, so yeah, sometimes it's good to do some research. It's good to pick up some techniques elsewhere and not just try to come up with everything yourself. Um, yeah, I really liked how the Rust turned out. I think it looked pretty good. The paint bit on the end where there's supposed to be little bits of paint left over in some spots i think that doesn't work too well but that's probably just a practice thing and an eye for where you should put the paint so practice 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 i should probably test magnets that i'm going to use before i glue them in um, the little ones that i put on the bottom of the shack aren't quite strong enough to hold it on really well they'll hold it if you're gentle and not shaking it around but a little bit of force just peels the thing right away um, so probably need to do some dry fit or with like blue tack or something uh, with with magnets if I'm gonna try that again just to make sure they're strong enough to hold and peel off only when I want them to peel off the ground color uh, with the sort of the green and the yellow and the orange and the washes and all of that uh, it ended up looking really pretty good I think um, and when I first started putting the color on, I was kind of scared because I thought I had ruined it. It was so bright. Everything was really like popping out at you. Even if, even though I mixed, um, I mixed that tan color in with all three to try to dull it down a bit. Um, but it worked out. And so when you're painting, if something doesn't look quite right, don't flip out. Just give it time. First, give it time to dry. The pigment will change as it dries. Um, and then you know, you can always adjust with washes or dry brushing or something, uh, as long as your layers are thin enough, so don't forget to thin your paints. So that about wraps it up for this one. Let me know what you thought in the comments, uh, either about the build or my weird soul-bearing commentary. Um, I hope that landed okay and maybe gave you a little bit of a better sense of what I'm doing here and why I'm doing it. Um, yeah. Until next time, take care, everybody. So I like to round up what I think I learned at the end. <laughs> Over here. And, you know, it's a learning experience. Um, that's the point. What the lessons learned. Man, I'm way weird today. <laughs>